Lessons from the Life of Nathan Van Etten, Season 2, Lesson 13, Obedience Obliterates Nathan Van Etten. By Pete Bowers and Charles Berman. All around us are signs of the totalitarian international Jewish bankers' New World Order secret government. We must constantly be on the lookout and eliminate their attempts to subjugate us whenever possible. Central to their plot and standing forlorn outside a dog obedience school is Nathan Van Etten. What are you talking about? Your secret Jewish plot to rule the world. That is not a secret! And I'm not Jewish. But how is that helping? I've been thrown out of the only home I have left, the Margaret Salisbury nose-bombed school for dog obedience, and tossed on the street. I have nowhere to go. I might starve unless I find food. And I don't know how to do that. Use your piles of ill-gotten gold. I, I, I don't have piles anymore. And I'm about to starve. Help! Help! Wait, I'll make a sign. We'll scream help. For food. Oh, being a vagrant is horrible. Aren't you planning to eat some Christian children or something? God, voice, shut up! I'm not Jewish or rich, and I don't eat Christian children. That is disgusting. I want a good old-fashioned, deep-fried, Twinkie casserole. Hostess brand, of course. I can only get that at the home that I've been thrown out of and replaced with Jane. All I want is love. A place to live. Free food, unlimited resources to pursue my hobbies, people doing my every whim, Star Wars action figures, authentic Blake's Seven props and costumes. Oh, oh, and a corduroy football would be cool. Oh, wow, I could go on forever. I noticed. Greedy. Hey, why is this so hard? I am abandoned! What are you going to do about it? Loan shark until you're wealthy again? Wow, we've never actually met, have we? I'm gonna sit here until somebody helps me. Of course. Mrs. Nussbaum? Come on, Nathan, in the car, I've got Scoob. Now get in. Sit. Arf! You won't believe it, but I thought I was abandoned. I was lost and there weren't even any reward posters up with my picture on them or anything. No, Nathan, we always return our students to their owners. And you are a person. We don't put lost dog signs up for people. God, you're just like my dad. The dog's right there, peeing on your back seat. What? Yeah, I figure you must be used to it since you run a dog school. No, I train them not to do that. I can't believe... uh... Wait, did you say it was number 62? Yes. You couldn't have walked this. It's two blocks. Do you expect me to know the way everywhere? No, just this one really short, completely convenient, hardly break a sweat way. Come on. Hello? Are you Mr. Van Etten? That is indeed my name. Please feel free to use it as often as you would like. You must be the new neighbor and my elsewhere dwelling son, Nathaniel. How kind of you to stand outside the door while the neighbor visits. Are you considering making your way towards the obedience school this week? Sir, I'm Margaret Salisbury Newsbaum from the Margaret Salisbury Newsbaum and Obedience School. I'm here to return your son. We trained him, as we are not an obedience school that shirks on our responsibilities, but in the future we want you to be completely aware that our school is for animals only. We will not feed your son. We will no longer give him a place to sleep. The bathrooms are for paying customers only. My business is not a university. Great place you sent me to, Dad. Thanks. Normally in a situation such as this, well, none of this would be happening since this has never happened before. We were about to call Child Protective Services on you, but your son is legally an adult. So we raised your bill considerably. The dog that your pet offspring brought with him to obedience school, another unheard of occurrence is just so you know, untrainable. This is just not done. Actually, among the Maasai people of Southern- and never mistreat your children at my place of business again. Here is your bill, and his report card, and his bag of doggy treats. 
Congratulations, Nathaniel. You seem to have misunderstood my instructions completely. And passed dog obedience school with flying colors. Hold on. Not meaning to interrupt. That is plainly an interruption. And not meaning to tell you how to raise your adult child. But you do that frequently, Jane. You are far more interested in the subject than I am. But does this mean that the dog isn't trained (coughs) and Nathan is? Yes. Thank you for spelling it out so clearly. Okay. In that case, Nathan, sit! Arf! Okay! Wow. Go get it. Not yet. What? You're supposed to give me a treat when I do it. This? Mm, Milk bone, of course. Go get it. Arf, arf! (laughs) I never thought I'd say so, but this is actually really pitiful. Undeniably the case, Jane. Nathaniel, you may abandon your dog training. So long as you care for your own dog, I would prefer that you try to behave like a human being. There are, unfortunately, no training schools for this. Kindergarten? If only Nathaniel's presence there would not lead to his arrest in a society whose mores are so squarely against apparent child molestation. Now, Nathaniel, go walk this dog. Do what now? Go outside, walk down the street, and have Scoob with you. Oh wow, that sounds great! I really need to poop! And Scoob can show me how to get back! You know, I was going to uncover this big conspiracy and everything, but after what I've just witnessed, I've come to the conclusion, you're too stupid to be Jewish. Maybe. Jane showed me a copy of their handbook one time, and it was all in another language I don't even speak. Well, I'm glad I could come to an agreement. Maybe you, too, will come to the agreement the next time. Wait, wait a minute! I think I've really learned a lesson today. What? Sit, beg, roll over, sick, lie down, fetch, play dead, stay, spin around. As I was saying, maybe next time you'll listen to lessons from the life of Nathan Van Etten. 